Okay, we're here talking about how you can better understand and manage the risks associated with the digital supply chain. How in this day and age where software comes from so many different places and sources throughout the ecosystem, how can organizations manage the risks associated with our dependence on software? And with me now are two great guests. Andrea Hall, who is a specialist solution architect and project manager for security and compliance at Red Hat. She's got a focus on public sector. And Andrew Block, who's a distinguished architect at Red Hat Consulting. Folks, welcome. Welcome. Thank Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. So Andrea, let's start with, with you. What, let's talk about regulations. What exists today that we should be aware of that organizations should be paying attention to? Oh, sure. So um, the thing that comes to mind first being in the U.S. is the presidential executive order on cybersecurity that came out a few months ago. Um, organizations are really paying attention to that. And, uh, you know, in the U.S., it's having a ripple effect with policy. Uh, but we're also seeing uh, policy considerations pop up in other countries, Australia and England. Uh, so the supply chain is a big focus right now, of course, uh, but we we see these changes coming down the road as, as more and more uh, government organizations are trying to secure uh, their critical infrastructure. Is there, is there kind of a leadership approach? In other words, is somebody so you're seeing what the UK does and saying, okay, we're going to follow that template or is it sort of uh, just a, a variety and a mishmash uh, with, with, with no sort of consolidation. How, how is that sort of playing out? Um, I see a lot of organizations kind of basing uh, their requirements on NIST 800-171, I'm sorry, NIST 853. Uh, however, you know, each organization has its own nuances. Each agency has its own nuances to how it wants it implemented. Great. Uh, Andrew, maybe you could chime in here. What are you seeing when you talk to customers that are, that are tuned into this issue? You know, as Andrea just mentioned, having that North Star in terms of regulations is so fundamentally great for them because many of them, especially in regulate, regulatory industries, look to these regulations on how they apply their own policies. So at least we have some guidance on how to move forward because as we all know, the secure software supply chain is getting news every day and how they act to it is something that I know all their leaders are asking themselves, especially those IT leaders. So Andrea, you know, when I talk to practitioners, they, they sometimes they're frustrated. They they understand they have to comply. They knew they know new regulations are coming out, but sometimes it's hard for them to, to keep up. So it would be helpful if if you're sitting across the table from somebody who's frustrated and they ask you, what are your expectations? How do you see, you know, the what are the trends in regulations? How do you see the current regulations evolving to specifically accommodate the digital supply chain and the security exposures? And, and, and corollary requirements there? I see a lot of organizations struggling in the sense of trying to understand what the policy actually wants. Um, definitions are still a little bit vague, uh, but implementation is also difficult um, because you know, sometimes organizations will add more tools to their toolkit, um, adding a layer of complexity there. Uh, it's you know, really automation has to be pulled in. Um, that's key to implementing this instead of adding more workload and more burden to your folks. Uh, it's really important for these organizations to pull uh, the stakeholders in the organization together. So the IT leaders bring together the developers, the security uh, uh, operations, sit at the same table, talk about whether or not um, what needs to be implemented or what's proposed to be implemented will affect the mission in any way or disrupt operations. It's important for everybody to be on the same page so it doesn't slow anything down um, as, as uh, you're trying to roll it out. And one of the things here is that we're seeing a lot of change with these new regulations and with a lot of organizations, any type of change is scary. And that is one area that they're looking for guidance, not only in the tooling, but also how they apply it in the organization. Well, well I'll add on. Please. I'll add on to that and say, you know, um, organizations really need to take into account the people side of things too. Uh, people need to understand what the impact is to the organization so that they, uh, you know, don't try to find the loopholes. Uh, they're, they're buying into what needs to be done. Uh, they understand the why behind it. 
um, you know, for example, like if you walk into your house, you normally close the door behind you. Um, security needs to be seen as that, you know, as well. That's the culture and it's the habit and it's ingrained in the uh, fabric of the organization uh, to uh, live this way, not just implement the tools to do it. Right, and the number of doors you have in, in your infrastructure are a lot more than just a couple. Um, Andrew mentioned sort of guidance and governments are obviously taking a more active role. I mean, sometimes I'm a cynic. I mean, great that President Biden signs an executive order, but this you know, swipe of a pen doesn't really give us enough to go on. Do you think, Andrea, that we're going to see new guidance from governments in the, in the very near future? What are you expecting? Um, I, I expect to see um, more conversations happening. Uh, so I know that uh, organized agencies that, who develop the policies are pulling together stakeholders and getting input. But I do see in the not too distant future that mandates will be rolling out, yes. Well, so Andrew and of course, Andrea, if you have a thought on this as well, but how do you see organizations you know, dealing with adopting these new policies? Slowly, don't boil the ocean is one thing I tell talk to every one of them because a lot, a lot of these tooling, a lot of these concepts are foreign to them, brand new. How they adopt those and how they implement them needs to be done in a very agile fashion, very slow and you know prescriptive. Go ahead and try to find one area of improvement and go ahead and work upon it and build upon it because not only does that not only, not only make your organization more successful and secure, but also helps your organization just from a morale standpoint. One thing that you need to emphasize is that don't blame anyone because a lot of times when you're going through this, you're reassessing your, your own supply chain and might find where you could see improvements that need to be done. Don't blame things that may have occurred in the past see how you can benefit from these lessons learned in the future. You know, it's interesting you say that about the blame game. I mean, it, it, it used to be that failure meant f you get fired. And that's obviously is, is changed. Uh, it's not about, it, it, as many have said, you, you know you're going to have incidents. It's how you respond to those incidents, what you learn from them. Do you have, Andrew, any insights from specifically working with customers on securing their software supply chain? What, what can you tell us about what leading practitioners are doing today? They're going in and, and not only assessing what, what their software components consist of, using tools like an SBOM, a software bill of materials to understand where all the components of their ecosystem and their lineage comes from. So we, we're hearing almost every single day, new vulnerabilities that are being introduced in, in various software packages. By having that understanding of what is in your ecosystem, you can then better understand how to mitigate those concerns moving forward. So Andrea, you know, Andrea was just saying, one of the things is you, you don't just dive in, you got to be careful. There's going to be ripple effects is what I'm inferring. But at the same time, you know, there's a mandate to move quickly. So are, are there things that could accelerate the, the, the adoption of regulation or even the creation of, of regulations and, and that guidance in your view, what could accelerate this? Uh, as far as accelerating it goes, I think it's having those pro conversations proactively with the stakeholders in your organization and understanding the environment, like Andrew said, go ahead and get that baseline uh, and, and just know that whatever changes you make are maybe going to be audited down the road um, because as we were moving towards this uh, kind of third party verification that you're actually implementing things in order to do business with another organization. So the importance of that, uh, if organizations see that, um, that, that gravity to this, uh, I think they will try to you know, speed things up. Um, I, I think that uh, if organizations, uh, and the people in those organizations understand that why that I talked about earlier, uh, and they understand how it uh, things like solar winds or things like the um, the uh, uh, oil um, disruption that happened earlier this year. The personal effects of cyber events will help your organization move forward. Again, everybody's bought into the concept. Everybody's working towards the same goals, and they understand that why behind it. In addition to that, having tooling available that makes it easy for them. You have a lot of individuals who this is all foreign 
providing that base level tooling that aligns to a lot of the regulations that might be applicable within their realm and their domain makes it easier for them to start complying and taking less burden off of them to be able to be successful. So it's it's a hard problem because <laughs> how do you how how do you deal, Andrew? How do you deal with sort of the comment uh, uh, more tools? Okay, but I look at that the Optiv ma map. If you've seen that, it's just it's it makes your eyes cross. Um, so you've got so many tools, so much fragmentation. You, you're introducing new tools. Can automation help that? Is there is there is there hope for consolidation of that tools portfolio? Right now, this space is very emerging. It's very emerging. It's very fluid, to be honest, because the executive mandates only you know, a year or two old as they've come you know, over, over the course of time. However, I do see these types of tooling starting to consolidate, where right now it seems like every vendor has a tool that tries to address this. It's being able to have the, the people work together, have more regulations that will come out that will allow us to start to redefine and solidify on certain tools like ISO standards. Um, there are certain ones that I mentioned on S-Bombs previously, there's now a ISO standard on S-Bombs there wasn't previously. So as more and more of these regulations come out, it makes it easier to provide that recommended set of tooling that organizations can start leveraging instead of vendor A, vendor B. So Andrea, I, I said it before I was a cynic, but we'll give you the last word, give us some hope. I mean, obviously public policy is very important, a partnership between governments and, and industry, both the practitioners, the organizations that are buying these tools, as well as the technology industry, got to work together in, in an ecosystem. Uh, give us some hope. The, the, the hope I think will come from uh, realizing that as you're doing this, as you are implementing these changes, you're, you know, in, in a sense, prevent trying to prevent those future incidents from happening. So there's there's some assurance that you're doing everything that you can do here. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a, a situation. Um, you know, it can be daunting. You know, I'll put it that way. It can be really daunting for organizations. But just know that uh, organizations like Red Hat are doing what we can to help you down the road. And really, it's, it's just continuing this whole shifting left mentality. This, you know, the software supply chain is just one component, but really introducing DevSecOps security at the beginning that really will make the organizations become successful because this is not just a technology problem; it's a people people issue as well. And being able to kind of package them all up together will help organizations as a whole. Yeah, so that's a really important point. You know, you hear that term shift left for years. You heard, you know, people say, "Hey, you can't just bolt security on." As an, as an afterthought, that's problematic. And that's really, that's the answer to, to that, that problem, right? Is shifting left, meaning designing it in at the point of, of code, infrastructure as code, DevSecOps, that's where it starts, right? Exactly, being able to have security at the forefront and then have everything afterwards, you know, propagate from your security mindset. Excellent. Okay, Andrea, Andrew, thanks so much for coming to the program today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thanks for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, your global leader in enterprise tech coverage.